I'm Jane Hobson, Managing Editor at Global Travel Retail Magazine, and today I have Michael Payne here with me, President and CEO of the International Association of Airport Duty-Free Stores. Michael, you need no introduction, but thank you so much for meeting with me today. Yeah, good morning. My pleasure. Thank you for uh, the invitation. Thank you. So the Summit of the Americas is coming up in about one month from April 16th to 19th. It'll take place in West Palm Beach. Florida, I thought this would be a good opportunity for you to give me a bit of an update on what can be expected at SOTA this year. So we are obviously excited and looking forward to it. It's uh, it's kind of crunch time for, for us, but we're feeling very uh, positive um, um, about the event. Um, I know that the, the media is always interested in numbers, so I can share that we're well ahead of where we were last year, uh, a month out. I don't know what that means at the end of the day, but it, it means for, for now that we're doing better than last year, which was, I thought, a very successful meeting. We've got about 75 uh, exhibitors uh, confirmed and, and obviously um, still have some interest. We still have some people calling and trying to see if they can get in for exhibit space. So that feels good. Um, our our numbers are right around um, uh, right around 600 people as of today. Um, and then last year, uh, the on-site registration was nearly 300 people plus between now and on-site. I don't know how many we'll get. So I think it's the numbers I think are going to be good. We've got a solid 200 plus uh, of buyers so far, and we'll obviously have some more registered. So if you're looking at it from a numbers perspective, I think it's it's just, it's encouraging. Um, again, it's hard to predict what will happen in the next 30 days. Everybody's registering late for everything these days. I mean, yeah. just every meeting I've ever been to in the last year and a half, it's just people wait. So, um, but we're feeling comfortable about it. The The content program is a little different this year. Um, I, I think last year we probably had too many sessions and this year we're having uh, four um, and and maybe a workshop on the, on the cruise industry. We're working on those details now, but so Monday we have a keynote first thing in the morning and then a session in the afternoon with ACI North America and ACI Latin America, which I think will be really interesting. Um, and then Tuesday morning, uh, Tax Free World Association is helping put on a session with people from various um, locations in our region. Um, and then in the afternoon, Tuesday, one o'clock is uh, the airport restaurant and retail association is having a, having a session and, and also involving some of the um, um, suppliers and um, and operators from the region. So I think the content is going to be really good this year. And they're, they're hour-long sessions, so I think they'll be sweet to the point. Um, and um, hopefully that'll be successful this year. So um, And there's some, a lot of social activities at night. Every night there's a cocktail reception that we're putting on Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then others are sponsoring some private events. So it feels like it's getting back to some more normalcy, if you will. You right. asked the question earlier um, of uh, uh, whether we're doing a, an exhibit hall or not, and we are. We still yeah. have some, we still yeah. have some uh, firms, companies that wanted those private suites that had them last year, so that's fine. Okay. We, we, they've got those again, yeah. and and then there then there is an exhibit hall floor. We uh -huh. don't have we don't have but a couple of exhibits that are sort of outside the hall. Yeah. Um, th those were people that were grandfathered in, but everybody else is in the hall if they're not in a private room. So that's the uh, so uh, a bit of a different layout than last year. Um, that's when everyone last year was everyone was sort of out in the hallways. And I remember at the end, you and I had discussed in the closing press conference this idea of having an expo hall. So it looks like it's moving more toward that format for this year with some companies still in their private suites. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. That's that's the balance, and I and I think that's probably the the, the way we'll go go forward. We'll we'll see how it goes this year. I mean, we we evaluate all of this after every event, so yeah. we'll make changes if we need to, or or, or, or go in a different direction, uh, whatever's required. But uh, that's ex that's exactly right. That's what we're doing this year, and uh, people seem to be very receptive to it. Yeah. We'll also have a um, in the hall where we'll try to create a, a, a some kind of networking area where people can sit down and and visit with each other and that way it ensures that everybody is in the hall as opposed to doing it so last year we had a separate networking section that was upstairs and kind of far away and i, I think it'll be better to try to incorporate it 
um, in the exhibit halls itself. So right. everybody who goes in there will have to have been registered and and, and badged and um, you know and paid their fee, and so it, it should be more productive for everybody. But yeah, that was one of my questions as well. Do you know where the registration area will be located this year? I know that's a very specific question to ask in advance, but I just recall that last year there was some, um, you know, kind of questioning of where that would be placed for this year. Yeah, no, we we are definitely going to move it. We put it where we did last year just because it was our first time and first effort there, and we we yeah. didn't know what space was going to be taken by exhibitors, and so we put registration sort of, I think, too far away, but this year, the registration area is going to be right in front of the exhibit hall, right when you come into the center. Um, there'll be a, a, a desk, if you will, a registration desk, where we'll be able to do registration right there um, right. and not have people have to go all the way down that corridor. Um, so that that was something we really had decided on last year, but it was last minute. We just, you know, we had exhibitors that wanted the space where I wanted to do registration, so I gave it to them. Yep. Uh, but this year, we just decided we'll keep that desk area for ourselves. So that's where it'll be. Okay. So it'll be a little more accessible for people coming in from outside the center or people walking through that tunnel from the uh, from the Hilton. Right. It'll be a lot closer for everybody. Yeah, it sounds like definitely you're facilitating a very easy and convenient event for this year. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, <laughs> another question, uh, a follow up from the closing press conference from last year. Um, have you got any update on food and beverage that will be available at the convention center? I know everyone gets hungry and thirsty and needs a coffee while they're networking. So <laughs> any update on that? Yeah, that's a good, that's a really good question. So we in the exhibit hall itself, there are food and beverage services that are normally provided for uh, you know companies or industries when they're having an event. And so we're going to utilize the food and beverage services at the convention center and probably in the hall itself. And, and we'll upgrade it. Last year we had it, but it was, it was upstairs, out of the way, kind of spotty. Um, and um, I feel like we can make it a little bit more con convenient. There's also... There's also an easy walk across the street for folks that want to go out and eat lunch, which a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, and one of the advantages of, of, of Palm Beach for me or uh, for our attendees is they don't have to get in a car and go somewhere like they used to have to do in Orlando. You, you can eat pretty pretty easily, and whether it's a nice lunch or you just want a quick sandwich or whatever. So they'll, So the point is there'll be options. The Hilton will have some uh, lunch service as well. It's all kind of right there together. Um, but, yep. uh, you know, the convention food is always kind of light. I mean, it's mostly sandwiches and salads. I don't think we'll have heavy lunches yeah. pre prepared. Yeah. They'd have to go somewhere else for that. So, yeah, we, we intend oh, to do a better job this year. Okay. Okay, great. Um, are there any other updates or things that maybe you're looking forward to about the show? I know you mentioned the format has changed a bit in terms of conference sessions. Um, do you want to highlight any particular speakers at this time or any, you know, further updates on that workshop that's maybe coming together? Well, I think all four of the sessions are are, are going to be really good. I do. And they're all a little bit different. So it's kind of hard to say which one's going to stand out the most. I hope they'll all stand out. I know the people who are working with us or the individuals who are helping moderate and, 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 and organizing these have spent a lot of time and energy getting the right speakers and right panels. And other than the opening plenary speaker, which is just a single speaker who for the first time is not a specifically an industry rep, like yeah. we usually focus on industry, but this will be relevant and related. And I think people are going to really enjoy it. The others are are really panel type formats with individuals from either the supplier side, the operator side, or the airport side, and um, so I'm I'm hoping they'll be really uh, interesting for everybody, and then there'll be some open discussion opportunities for questions from the audience as well. Okay, okay, so lots of interaction. That's great. Yeah, that's our hope. Good, good. Well, I'm looking forward to it. We'll we'll be there, so it'll be great to see you. Um, now, now moving on, Michael, to a bit of a general update on the region. Um, can you share anything with us? So, you know, the region is huge. So we're talking Canada to the tip of Argentina, in effect, and and we'll have attendees and representation from from that lot of a geographic area. But I I would say that. Overall, you have to feel good about what's going on with the retail and traveling in in all of the Americas. I mean, business is really coming back pretty strong. There's certainly going to be, it's very situational, but there, there are going to be airports where 
for example, Chinese travelers have not quite yet returned. Yeah. Starting to, and that'll be a huge boost, but you're going to have a, examples where they have not hit that mark like they did at pre-COVID just because some of the travelers aren't back. But by and large, um, the international travel in the Americas is, is really strong. I mean, the cruise industry is certainly doing well. So Miami's booming with, with that business. Um, um, and, and in fact, even during COVID, there was a, a good bit of, of, of north-south travel that was working, particularly Mexico, never really shut down, if you right. will. It, right. It's more of the east-west part that was troubling uh, Europe and China and other parts of Asia, but that seems to be changing in a very positive way. And so I just think overall, people feel like business is good and it's and it's coming back and no, it's not quite where it was. We're still lacking some business travelers, which are which tend to be the higher spin, yeah. if you will. But that is also starting to pick up a bit. But I think it's lagging behind the the, the leisure and um, you know association type travel business conferences and conventions. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah I, th I I think people are feeling pretty good, and there's a lot of investment going on in airports, which also reflects a sort of a booming cycle, if you okay. will. A lot of expansions and. Um, improvements and um, uh, new new terminals. So I, I, I think it's a very positive story with, you know, with, with some caution that there are always going to be little pockets of uh, challenges and um, we, we still have a ways to go to get back to where we were, but right. the trend line certainly speaks uh, favorably for everybody. Yeah. Cautious, cautiously optimistic. Yeah. 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 I think That's so. great. That's great. Um, so do you think that this uptick that we're seeing in the region is contributing to, because I think you had said earlier that the the numbers for the event this year are, you know, it's going to be bigger than last year. Do you think that is tied to it? People are ready to to network and really get back to business? I do. I, I think that there's a, definitely a correlation between people feeling better about their business yeah. and seeing some of their revenues grow and going to an event like the the Summit of the Americas and reconnecting and and doing business there. I, I mean, people, I think, are still cautious about spin. I, I'm not suggesting that it's a, a free-for-all, and I think people will be careful about who they send and how many people yep. they send. And you, you'll you still have examples where they might, you, they might in the past have sent 10 people, but now they're sending six or seven. I, I mean, I don't know what the numbers are, but I do think that if business is, is doing well, which it is, and people are feeling more positive there's an encouragement to to go whereas last year i think part of it was people just wanted to get back and see each other because they've been isolated for for three years and I, and I think that contributed to some of the success last year but i think this year it's more the momentum of the industry overall and and and, and people wanted to reestablish those contacts and and start looking at new products and reestablishing relationships so i yeah i think it's all directly tied right if, if, it, if it was a if it was a really negative business cycle out there, I'm sure we wouldn't have as many people registering. So, right. Yeah. Well, that's, um, that's very good to hear, Michael. I'm looking forward to being there next month and we'll see you and we'll connect. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you for taking time today. Thank you so much, Michael. Okay.